Hi, I'm Brad Knowles, producer of Friday Night Flies, hosted by Scott LeBoldis and Scotty Holmes. Enjoy the show. All right, everybody, we're back. Friday Night Flies in the house. Another season, getting ready to kick off here this fall. Um, so today we're going to do something that's not necessarily fly tying. Um, it's a little bit different. I'm going to get a lot of flack from this, I know, from all the purists out there. Uh, we're going to talk about trout beads. So trout beads are a very, very effective way to fish for trout, especially this time of year in our local waters. We have a lot of salmon that are running up the rivers, the trout are falling behind them, the salmon are dropping eggs, the trout are there to pick off an easy meal. So you can do this on a spinning setup, a drifting setup, a bait caster. I like to do it on the fly. Um, it's a very, very easy way to fish for trout this time of year. I'll post up some photos here. Me and Jordan were out last week. We got into some hefty, hefty bull trout and uh, cutthroat as well, even a little fat rainbow. Um, so yeah, basically the trout are keying in on these eggs that the salmon are dropping. So what you want to do is you want to find where the salmon are spawning. You usually see them, they're running up little side channels and stuff like that. You'll see them, they're all zombied out in the river. Um, and basically you're going to want to leave those fish alone. They're doing their thing, no need to bother them. They've got enough trouble getting there as it is. So basically what you're going to do, you're going to look for the troughs, the pools, the runs, um, all that kind of stuff behind all the fish. Um, even structures, so big log jams and things like that. Um, and basically you're going to drift these beads through those areas. Because uh, that's usually where the trout are holding and that's where they're going to pick off the, the eggs as they come through. So it's a super simple setup. Um, we've been blessed by uh, trout beads here, it's hooked us up big time. Um, kind of go through this and uh, show you guys what's what. It's a, there's a lot of companies out there, but Trope Beads I find is a, a really great one. They have a large variety of product um, that makes it very easy to do this and to kind of match the hatch, if you will. So let's uh, bring everything in a little bit closer and we'll uh, show you guys what we got. All right, so here we go. So uh, Trope Beads, like I said, has hooked us up big time with uh, a lot of different product here, which is kind of cool. So they make a variety of egg sizes to kind of match that hatch, like I was saying. So they've got the from a 6 mil, an 8 mil, a 10 mil, there's a 12 millimeter, and they've just come up with a new 14 millimeter bead. Um, so basically, you name it, you can fish for it, you're probably going to catch it on a bead, which is kind of cool. Um, I'm even going to cheat a little bit this year and probably drift some for some steelhead uh, come February, uh, late January, up in the Squamish and <laughs> see what happens there. Um, so like I said, they come in a variety of different colors. I don't know if you guys can see this, I'll kind of zoom in on this for you guys and give you a shot of each. but. You've got your traditional just full color bead, um, which is quite, uh, it's just a solid color. Um, some of them are even a little bit transparent, which is kind of cool. Then you've got your kind of your pearl beads. You've got your, I don't know if I have any here. Do I have them? Yeah, we've got the modeled beads. They've got kind of a modeled finish to them. Um, those ones are probably one of my favorites. And then we've got uh, the glow beads as well, which they kind of have started coming out with. So these ones actually glow in the dark, which is kind of cool. Great for those early morning fish in the uh, late in the evening. And then uh, you've got your blood dot eggs. So these ones have a nice blood dot on them. Um, kind of to show off that you know, emerging salmonid that's going to start uh, hatching out of there. So like I said, the setup's super simple. Um, there's a couple different ways to do it. Uh, the way that I like to do it, so I basically just have my normal tapered leader. I like to run like a 5X, uh, 5X leader on this guy. And I add about a 12 or 18 piece, uh, 18 inch piece of tippet. So either in a 5X or a 6X, um, like a four or five pounds uh, fluorocarbon or whatever you want to use will do the job. And basically all I do to attach it is a surgeon's knot, which is super simple to do. I'm going to save you the time from doing that. Um, another way you can do it, you can attach um, with a swivel. So a very tiny size swivel is really all you need. You can do up a leaderboard. You can have a bunch of these ready to go. Uh, I don't have one with me here today, but that's uh, kind of the way that I would do it. So basically all I'm going to do now, if I can find one here, so you're going to need some split shots. So kind of in the, the BB sized ones, they're super tiny. You can get them in packs for like two bucks, they're, they're pretty cheap, but there's a whole bunch of different sizes that you can get, but try to find the smallest ones that you can. You can get the, uh, like these ones here, they have, they're removable, so they have the little wings on them. You can use those or you can use just the, the solid ones as well. That's all up to you. And I'm going to find that knot, which is right here. I'm just going to crimp these beads down directly at the knot. Okay, so that's super easy. I'm just going to slide that down. So as soon as it hits that knot, it's not going to slide down and get in the way of your bead at all, which is kind of nice. So now I'm going to do, I'm going to select a bead. 
Wednesday we were getting those, those pinks that were kind of all spawned out. Um, their eggs have been in the river for a while, so they're a fresh dead kind of color. So they're not going to be the big bright reds and dark oranges and the, the deep pinks and things like that. They're going to be a little bit paler. So I was using these kind of peachy ones, um, which kind of uh, imitate that life stage that those beads are in. So basically I'm just going to slide that on my leader and it can slide up and down. So trim off a little bit of this here. And all I'm going to do now, so Trout Beads makes their own hooks, so I'm excited to try these. So they've got them in a 4, size 6, size 8, and a size 10. Um, so for the 8mm beads, I like to use a size 8 or a size 10 hook. Um, this is just what I got here on my own. You can use barbless if you like, that would be preferred. Um, here in BC, you got to pinch those barbs anyway. Um, so you, there's like a Tiemco 2499, I want to say it is. Um, it's a nice little egg-shaped hook. Um, any ones that you would normally use to tie chronomids on and things like that. So I'm just going to feed that through. This is just going to be an approved clinch and super easy not to do. Just because that tip is such a fine diameter that we uh, don't want it to slip on you. A normal clinch knot would just slip through. Of course doing this on camera. Always lick your knots. There we go. We're just going to trim away the excess there. Now, so as you can see, I got a hook, I got a split shot, and I got a bead that's willing to do whatever it wants. So, to prevent that from happening, the easiest way to do it is with these trout bead pegs. Okay, they come in a variety of different colors. Um, it's kind of cool. I've been kind of experimenting with the, the pink one last year. Um, when you have these solid colored beads, um, and you kind of want it to have that blood dot look, you can actually just throw in a different color peg and that gives you that same blood dot look, which is kind of cool. Um, they're also UV, which is kind of cool. The pink ones are for sure. I'm not sure about the orange ones. Don't have a light handy. Um, but it's kind of cool, so it gives that little extra tinge to it. So basically the pegs, I got one of the clear ones here. Hopefully you can see that. All you're gonna do is slide it through the end of the bead. And you're just gonna pull it so it's nice and snug. So each of these pegs, you can see there's a lot of excess there. That'll give you a second bead, which is kind of cool. So you want to trim away the short end, and then we're going to trim away the long end, except we're going to keep that piece, because like I said, you can use that for a future bead, which is kind of cool. Now, since I got this all set up, all I'm going to do now is slide that bead. Once it's pegged in, you can slide it, and I'm going to have it about an inch away from the hook. Okay, you don't want to go any further because if you have it two, three, four inches away, the fish risks swallowing that hook and then you're going to be snagging them and it's not good for the fish. So you really only want it about an inch away from the hook. Okay, I haven't had any problems with missing hookups or anything like that. Usually you're setting into a log and that's the way you're going to lose it. Now all that we need for this to all cap off is an indicator. So I use these thingamabobber um, indicators that are easy to adjust. You can use the, the slipping ones if you want. I don't think it's really necessary. So basically to run these, all you do is you fold your leader over, and there's a little hole on them. You slide that through, through the thingamabob. And then you're gonna take that loop and you're gonna pull it over and pull it nice and snug. Now that's not going anywhere. You can easily adjust that up or down leader wherever you want it to be. Now that you're usually gonna put one and a half times the depth of the water. Okay, so that's gonna work if you're running, uh, fishing a big run. Um, and then you're just gonna give yourself a couple check mends and this guy's just gonna be bounced along the bottom. You see that indicator, as soon as it does anything funny, you're gonna wanna set, because that's usually when the fish is taking the bead. Um, when you're fishing the troughs and the pools, usually you've got a big riffle going into it, you're gonna shorten that right up. When we were fishing last Wednesday, we were running maybe, maybe a foot and a half, two feet from the, uh, from the bead because it's going to be washing across those riffles pretty quick. It's going to stay up in the water column. Those fish are hanging out down below and they're coming up and eating them. So like I said, it's a super simple setup. It's not very difficult. They've got a variety of colors. We've got almost 150 different sizes and colors here in store at Bass Pro Tawasin. Um, so come on in, check us out. We'll definitely get you all set up and uh, we'll show you how to do it on uh, any application. So like I said, it's a super easy way to do it. I've got my pack here, um, so as you can see, Good to have a variety of different colors. I got the dark reds, the dark oranges, 
yellows, the peaches, the mottled, the solid colors, the clear ones. Um, those are going to be good for all different types of years. So it's always good to have a good variety of, uh, of beads on hand. Then I've got these uh, trail beads also makes their own packs, which is kind of cool. So this is just one that I had here at the shop. They just sent me these, so it's got spots for just about everything. I'm going to run this for hooks and pegs and stuff like that. So it's uh, an easy way to uh, store everything. Plus, when you open it up, they're not going to spill everywhere like I have with this one before. you got individual packets for everything. All right, so that's trout beads. Uh, I hope I don't get too much flack from all you purists out there. Um, you can run egg patterns and stuff like that. I just find these are a lot easier and cheaper to run, which is kind of nice. You can have a large variety of beads, and they're ready to go out of the package. Um, depending on the size, you get uh, 40 in this one. How many we get in this one? We get 15 in the uh, 10 millimeters. So you get less as the packs get or the beads get larger, but you have a whole bunch to you know, use. You're not really going to run out of a pack fairly quickly. Um, so yeah, like I said, come on in to Bass Pro to Austin. Uh, we're here at the White River Fly Shop today. Thanks for joining us. Hope you guys found that informative. Uh, it's a pretty easy way to fish. And uh, our friends from Halios Outdoors and Hook Advice. We're actually working on a little giveaway. We're gonna hook a couple of you guys up with some of these beads and pegs and things like that. So stay tuned for that and uh, hope you guys enjoyed. We'll see you next time.